This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning, everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Baruchem Abam. We're continuing in the Sefer Shaina Halachais. We're learning Simen Dalid. We're going to read again from Sif Kata Mem Gimel and An. We'll see if we can finish this up today. And then maybe next Sunday we'll do some in Yanei Shavuos. Elu Dvarim Srichem Netila B'mayim. I didn't put the beginning of Mem Gimel. We read it last week. The following things need Natila with water, ad haperek, until the wrist, the al kalpanim, ad soiv kishrei etzvayisov, at the very least, till the end of one's fingers. The emein loimayim, if you don't have water, dayim binikayim ba'alma. It would be enough just to clean them. Latayra, to learn, ulatfil and tadabin. And then, because there may be ruach ra, so when you get water, you should use water. Ukshayiz damin loimayim yito yadav. Okay? So the following things require Natila sidaim. You ready? Hakam mehamita, one who gets up in the morning. Vahamishamish mitasai, after marital relations. Vahahilech, the base hakvarais, somebody who goes to a cemetery. Now, this is very interesting. I've seen this halacha many times, but never really registered that one should actually wash their hands before they go to a cemetery and after. You should wash your hands before you pray at a grave. And then wash again when you come out. Some have a custom to wash their face when they come out of a cemetery. Okay, right? I, so now you should have this on your Shain Halacha sheets, okay? Someone who touches a dead body. Somebody who enters the room of a dead body. Now we're going to see, does that mean that you have to go within the Dalet Amos? So if somebody touched a dead body, entered the room of a dead body, or escorted a dead body, should not enter another house before he washes. Meaning one is required to wash your hands before they enter another house. Now, it's interesting, the Lashon here is a different house. That, by the way, that's the Lashon of the Ramah. The Lavush takes out the word, a different house. Which means you should not even enter your own house before you wash your hands. I once saw brought down for a Moshe Feinstein, you are allowed to enter a Makayim Tairo Tfila without washing your hands if you go to a cemetery. In other words, you want to go into a yeshiva or a shul, you could. What the reason is, I don't know. Now, all of these cases, all of these cases require washing three times. You get up in the morning, marital relations, cemetery, three times. But some say no. Only when you get up in the morning you need three times. All others, one is sufficient. Okay? Now I want to share with you a few things regarding washing. Um, if you look in the Dershu sheet on sheet number two that I sent you, in footnote 55. So, the minog of washing your hands when you enter by a mess, kasa prima gadim, that's only, ela b'shenichnas l'teich arba amos of shalnes, that's only if you go in within four cubits, b'chein kasa hachach masadam. Now this is very relevant. Sometimes a person, you know, wants to catch the end of a levaya. You know, sometimes the person doesn't have time to sit through the whole levaya. They want to make, you know, a strategic appearance. So they're going to be there at the end, so, when, so that they'll be seen, right? They want to be seen. So as everyone's escorting, they're going to be escorting. But they're escorting, you know, like 20 feet behind. Do you have to wash your hands? So he brings that the Prima Gadim and the Chachmas Adam say no. And that's what I always thought. Until I saw last night, Chazonish says that whenever you escort a mess, irrespective of how close or far you are, you should wash your hands. <clears throat> But, but you definitely have what to rely on if you're escorting from afar not to have to wash your hands. What about a kayim? What? And a kayim? Is this, is this enough for me by a kayim? Uh huh. Do you want to know, does a kayim, uh, is a kayim, could, could a kayim escort beyond four amais? I believe the answer is yes. Why? This has nothing to do with Tomas Mace. Well, you know, you're not Tommy Mace when, you, when you're, when so you're escorting. Stop, it's Rukhra. Okay. 
Now, let's go further. Mem Dalad. The following require washing one time. The above, we're dealing with, you know, heavy duty, serious ruach ra. So there's, there are opinions you have to wash three times. The following, you only have to wash one time. One who leaves the bathroom. So you go into the bathroom. What do you go in there for? To brush your teeth. You went into the bathroom to get a tissue. So now you went to a bathroom, you got to wash your hands. So now the question is, could you wash your hands in the bathroom? Or it's like, you know, it's like, how could you wash your hands in the bathroom? But when you come out, you have to wash your hands because you went to the bathroom. You know, like um, now, so we have in the restroom over here, you know, okay, by, by, by Mariv or, or by Mincha, you can wash your hands in a sink. But uh, by Shacharis, you know, we don't have a sink out of the bathroom. You know, what do you do? So... We're going to see in a minute. Even if you didn't take care of your needs. Or if you enter a bathhouse. Even if you didn't bathe there. Some are machmer to wash three times even when you come out of a bathroom. Some dispute that and they say you only have to wash one time. Some say shebekulan Dive in Atila Pamechad Malavad Hakamehamita. There are some opinions. The only time you have to wash one time is if you wake up in the morning. Okay, so now let's discuss this. Let's discuss a bathroom. Because as we know, there's a very big difference between, let's say, an outhouse and today's bathrooms. Sometimes in uh, people's houses, the most expensive and fanciest room in the house is the bathroom. Some people devote years of their life pouring over tiles and samples of uh, furniture for their bathroom. So for some people, the bathroom is mamish, akise hakavod, right? So the question is, do the laws of an etel sidaim apply in our bathroom? The bottom line is, the Gemara talks about something called the bathroom of the Persians. The bathroom of the Persians, they had some kind of, through, through their understanding of physics, where the tsaya would roll out and never remain in that place. So the question is, is our, and that bathroom, the Gemara says, does not have Ruach Ra. And that bathroom, you do not have to wash your hands. The bathroom of the Persians. They had this, you know, sewer system or some kind of pipe system where the Tsoya and the Meraglayim would be immediately rolled down elsewhere. So the question is, so you would think our bathrooms, kosher came, where you have a, you have a, um, a flushing system where instantaneously it's taken to the sewer system and then it's brought, in, brought to Staten Island right away. So the question is, uh, what's the halacha regarding our bathrooms? <coughs> so the Chazoinish, if you look in the Dershu notes in number 49, Does our bathroom have the status of a Persian bathroom, which does not have the status of a bathroom. Because the tsaya doesn't remain there, it's taken far away. Or do we say, no, by the Persians, it rolled down immediately. Our bathroom, but the guy's sitting there for, for hours until he's finished reading all the tomes that he has to take care of over there. So in the meantime, before he flushes, it's sitting there. So Chazanish has a tzad that maybe it does have a din of that because unless you flush immediately, then it's not like the Persian bathroom. By the way, the Igorist Moshe has the same shayla, and the Minchas Yitzchak has the same shayla, and Lamaisa Chazanish and Rav Moshe say that our bathrooms are worse than Persian bathrooms because people do not flush immediately, <coughs> and therefore. If you leave a bathroom, preferably you should wash your hands. Okay, so that's interesting. Our bathroom has a status of Ruach Ra. Now, now the question is, what about washing your hands in the bathroom? That's a very common shayla. You know, sometimes, well, you're, you know, not every situation is going to be a sink outside, or sometimes a person doesn't have, let's say a person goes to the bathroom upstairs in their house. Do they have to go downstairs and wash their hands? Could they wash their hands in their bathroom? That an Eitzah would be, if you leave the bathroom with your hands still wet, 
That's okay. Now, I don't know how hygienic that is. Because your hands are still wet. How exactly did you turn the doorknob? With wet hands. So it's very nice that you now have clean hands in the halacha. But now you're infecting the next person who has to go to that bathroom. You could put up a sign. Do not touch the interior of the doorknob. Only, you know, but that's... Okay, I'm not here to tell you hygiene. That you go to your hygienist. But halachically, Chazon says, if your hands are still wet when you come out, you're okay. The Minchas Yitzchak says, B'Shas Hadchak, B'Yef Sher B'Inyan Acher, Yesh Lahater. So I would say like this, if you're upstairs in your house, and you went to the bathroom, you have what to rely on to wash your hands in the bathroom, especially if your hands are going to be wet when you come out. However, it's preferable to go downstairs and to wash your hands. Now, what about washing your hands for bread in the bathroom? Regarding washing hands for achila, that we'll get to when we get to Hilchas and Tosidayim for bread. What about washing your hands in a bathroom for tefillah? Rav Moshe says you could be mekel, again, like the Chazanish, but make sure you dry them outside of the bathroom. <coughs> Closing the door, it's not like when you close the door, then the Ruach Ra comes. The, you know, he's, the Ruach Ra is looking. If the door closed, okay, let's get him. The, the, it's the bathroom, whether the door's open or closed. In terms of touching the door. What? In terms of touching the door. Oh, you mean for the hygiene? No, no. Oh, yeah. Now, here's an interesting question. What would the halacha be? You come out of the bathroom... And you see lightning. And if you go wash your hands, you won't be able to make the bracha because it's no longer Tarkadei Dibor. Right? To make a bracha on lightning, you have to do it within, you know, a few split seconds. But I just came out of the bathroom. So if I go run and wash my hands, I'm going to lose the bracha on the lightning. The halacha is, unless your hands are filthy, you can make a bracha. You'd be allowed to make a bracha. Now, what if you go into a bathroom on Yom Kippur, okay? You didn't use the bathroom. You just went into that. Now, on Yom Kippur, you have to be very cautious about washing your hands. It's not posh you're going to wash your hands, okay? Because, again, many, many places can say our bathroom does not have the status of a bathroom. Okay. Now, let's move on. Because uh, many of you came because you want to hear about shoes. This is the topic of the day. Now... Before we do that, what if you touch a louse? How do you say a, a, a lice in the singular? A louse? One lice is a louse? Yeah, okay. Vahanoigea bikina. If you touch a louse, the hamafli kelev, or you de louse your shirts or your clothing. Okay, so hopefully you don't have that problem. If you do, kindly exit net. No. But um, the hamafli kelev, someone who is de lousing his kelev, even if you don't touch, the laos, you have to wash your hands. If you cut your nails, okay, you got to wash your hands. You let blood from your shoulders. Anyone who uses a, a, um, a leak, what is it? Um, a leech. Did anyone do that? those practices at? They do have, um, not bloodletting, but it's very in now to have infusion parties, right? So you go, you go to your, uh, your, your um, not a pediatrician, you go to a medical uh, professional, and people have themselves infused with vitamin B, all kinds of uh, things, and people actually make parties where they get together and everyone is infused together. So if you, I don't think you have to wash your hands then, only if you let blood with a leech, Shekorin favkus or bankus, those are like suction cups. The hamagaleach, or if you shave, this is a, or you take a haircut, okay? The chol elu, all of these hatam yishum ruachra, meaning well, everything we mentioned till now is because of ruachra. 
Therefore, you should wash your hands right away. So if you cut your nails, you should wash right away. Take a haircut, you should wash right away. So everything we said until now is washing for Ruach Ra. Now we're going to talk about washing for <laughs> cleanliness. Okay? The following require washing for cleanliness. One who takes off his shoes. Im If you touch them. So if you touch your shoes when you remove them, you got to wash your hands. If you've, if you've perfected the art of flipping off your shoes without touching them, you don't have to wash your hands. Again, this is for cleanliness, to be able to learn, to be able to daven. Now, this is very interesting. Does this apply to all shoes? Let's say, nowadays, um, it's, most shoes are not leather anymore. People wear Crocs. Crocs are made out of what, rubber? Most shoes, you think they're leather. They're synthetic. So the question is, does the din of taking off shoes, is it because the shoes are dirty, or is it something that leather? So look in the Dear Shoe Note 52. He brings Stam Na'alim, Stam shoes are dirty. But if you touch cloth shoes, or rubber shoes, the Eirech Shai says, only leather shoes. Chazoy Nish says, only leather shoes. You know, Nafkamina would be, you're wearing galoshes. Or you're wearing something over your shoe. You come into the show, you take them off. You don't have to wash your hands. Kain going up to Dukhan. Kain going up to Dukhan. Yeah, but interesting, this I never knew. The Ben Chai says that you do have to wash your hands. But the Ashkenazic Poiskim, they say you do not have to wash your hands unless the shoe is leather. Okay? Your shoes? One second. Right now we're talking about the shoe itself. The only leather. Now, now we're talking about shoelaces. Okay? So for Ashkenazim, you do not have to wash your hands unless it's a leather shoe. What about shoelaces? Chazoinish, it is well known, he says, you do not have to wash your hands if you touch shoelaces. Shoelaces is not part of the shoe. Rebel Yashiv says, you do have to wash your hands. Okay, fighter. When else do you have to wash your hands? Vahanogea baraglov. If you're touching your feet, you're learning with your kid. The kid's like, you know, his, his hand is all over his feet. Uh, when you're learning, you don't touch your feet. Vahachoyfeif roishai. If you scratch your head, you have to wash your hands. Why? The head is considered a sweaty spot. Yeah, but I just used Pantene shampoo and conditioner and 90 different products. No, it doesn't matter. You're, now, now we're gonna come to that in a minute. Because, let's say you, okay, so if you touch your, you scratch your head, you have to, you have to uh, wash your hands. If you touch your body in a dirty spot, that's full of sweat, you have to touch your hand, you have to wash your hands. If you touch a flea, Efshar or mosquito died in the kind of then you could just wipe them. Somebody who got his hands dirty in the garbage, if you stuck your hands in the mud, let's say you have a custom of sticking your hands in the mud, then you do not even have, well, you don't have to wash them. You could just wipe them, you could just wipe the place that got a little bit dirty, Vidai, and that's enough. Now, there are a few interesting questions over here. What if you don't scratch your head, you just touch your hair? You touch your hair, do you have to wash your hands? No. It's only if you get to the scalp. Okay? It's only if you get to the scalp. You get to the scalp, they used to have rabbeim, they would take out keys, and they would, they would scratch their head. Hopefully they didn't inflict any damage, but What's the Indian of that? You don't want to scratch your head when you're in the middle of learning. Now, what would the halacha be if you're in the water and you touch your, right? If you touch your body, you have to wash your hands. So in other words, somebody touches above the elbow, they have to wash their hands. Somebody who touches in the shirt, they have to wash their hands. Let's say somebody comes out of the shower. They just came out of the shower. You can tell me they're momule zeya. 
I can understand if a guy didn't take a shower for three and a half weeks, <clears throat> so he's grimy. The guy just walked out of the shower. He, he was scrubbing himself there with antibacterial um, products and soaps, and, and he came out. Now he has to wash his hands. So, Shal Sechuvah's Torah Lashma. Who wrote Shal Sechuvah's Torah Lashma? The Ben Eshchai. He says, you could make a bracha. Why? The, actually, the Ben Eshchai writes, if you're in the pool and you're touching yourself, you can make a bracha. Let's take this. A guy wants to eat lunch in the pool. I don't know, is that healthy? They used to say that you can get a stomach ache, right? They made that up. Right? They, made, they don't want to get the pool dirty. So they said, if you eat while you're in the pool, then it's not healthy. The guy wants to eat uh, lunch in the pool. So could he wash the til sidayim? And while he's touching himself, the Ben Eshchai writes, yeah, what, what are you worried? He's full of sweat. How can he be full of sweat? He's in the pool. Rav Shlomo Zalman says, and Rav Shlomo Zalman says, likewise, you could eat lunch in the pool. Rav Vazner writes, you cannot touch yourself even in the pool. I guess loy plug. What about if you just took a shower and you, you know, you smell like, you know, like uh, whatever advertisement, you know, you smell very clean. What's the halacha? The Ben Eshchai writes, if you're, if you're still wet, it's like you're in the water and we don't have to worry about zeya. Once you dry off, we have to worry about zeya. The Eshel Avram of Uchatz um, says that loy plug. You have to wash the tila. <coughs> Kafa Chaim says, right after a shower, you don't have to wash. What if you want to touch a smelly undershirt, and then then the Bir Halacha writes, you should not touch it. You you would have to wash your hands. Also, um, if you want to touch the inside of a hat, it says you shouldn't do that. Um, you should wash your hands before that. Okay, let's see. Let's see if we could finish up. So Okay. When you're davening, when you're eating. By the way, this applies when you're eating. You should not scratch your head while you're eating, because uh, you wash the tilsidai for clean hands. Avoid. So by eating, make sure you have a nice key in your pocket. <clears throat> you know, this way, you could scratch your head. Um, don't scratch your thigh, your leg. Don't pull up, you know, the bottom of your pants and scratch yourself. You touch yourself, you got to wash your hands. And don't say, I'll, I'll do it and I'll wash. No, don't do it. You should not get your hands dirty in the first place. Do not scratch your head. But if you want to scratch your face, or, or the place that are uncovered on your head, you want to scratch your arm above the elbow, until the elbow, you know what an island boygen is? An elbow? Up to the elbow, you want to wear short sleeves? No problem, just don't touch your arm above your elbow while you're learning or davening. It's not going to help. Even though it's the derach for people to wear short sleeves. Your neck until the chest is considered a spot that you should not touch during learning, davening, and eating. Now, if you live in a place that they unbutton the top button, let's say in New York, most people unbutton the top button. Okay? Now some people unbutton the second button. Pal? That's too much. That's too much for comfort. Okay? Please remain dressed in public areas. Okay? Especially in shul. We don't need to know anything beyond the top button. That's your personal business. Okay? Ain la Okay? So in other words, even though you would say maybe if I scratch my neck over here, um, I should wash my hands. No, the top button, you're given leeway, that's considered maka magula. Now, what if you live in uh, Saudi Arabia? You, 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 you daven in the young Israel of Saudi Arabia. Or the young Israel of uh, Abu Dhabi. What, what is it called? Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi, young Israel of Dubai, Agudas Israel of Dubai, right? What's the, and you, everyone there walks barefoot. So, why you... Why you insist on advertising 
the fungus in your toenails, that's your personal business. But if that is the minag of the makam, efshe da hava b'chlal makam es hamagulim, and you would not have to wash your hands if you touch your feet. Okay, um, let's finish this up. Memchas, the oime bitfil, your middle of davening. Venisko shenagam makam tuf. You remember, oivei, I scratched my head. Dai binikoyen afar. Then you could wipe your hands on dust. Oishem achachich yad bekoisel, or wipe it on the wall. But that's good for Psuke de Zimra, for Kriya Shema, or excuse me, that's good in general, for learning, or Brachos. Avo be Kriya Shema, be Psuke de Zimra, Tzarech Lelech Li Yadav. You gotta go wash your hands. In other words, if you remember right before Shema, you scratched your head, you have to go wash your hands. Vim Naga Betoy Chasuda, if you scratched your head in the middle of a meal, that you wash until Sidam, Yital Yadav Shainis Blay Bracha, you should wash again without a Bracha. If you entered a bathroom, you should wash until Sidaim again. Some say that you can wash your hands in a bathroom and go out if your hands are wet. That's what we mentioned earlier. Chazonish says you should not do this in the middle of a meal. But... But for learning and davening, it sounds like you could do that. Wash in the bathroom and leave um, with your hands wet. Mem, we're almost done. Sarach lizar mizea. Be careful from sweat. Don't get sweat on your hands before learning and davening. Shekolzea sam hamavis. Sweat is the elixir of death. It's poison, except for the sweat of the face. Now we know that sweat is like meiraglayim. It's the same thing. Yeah? Except for the sweat of the face. How do we know the sweat of the face is okay? It says, Bezeas apecha toichal lechem. So the sweat of the face, okay. Haroiche, now, now we have some hygienic advice. We're going to end over the hygienic advice. If you wash your face, you better dry it well. If you don't dry it well, you could get pimples. Okay? Haroiche it's panav. Somebody washes his face, like nagvam yafa, and he doesn't dry it well. Panav misbaka is. Your face could crack. You could get boils. Refuasai. The refu is lurchoitz harbe b'mei silka. Use beet juice. That's a proven remedy for a cracking face from not drying. Okay. Rav Chanan yimei kasha oimer. 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 Have a great day, everyone. Bezos Hashem. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.